Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'll go over Windwalker Monk Arena playstyle and comps and BFA. The footage we'll be using today is from Van Rookie, one of the top Windwalkers in US. This video will also contain updated talents, Azerite traits and stats so you can create pressure for your team with the right talent choices. The best comp for Windwalker at the moment is Windwalker Mage. This can be played with any healer, but seems to perform best with a priest. Windwalker Mage has a lot of burst damage and can prolong the game for a long time while waiting for burst windows. Combined with a Druid, this comp has a lot of cross CC and with a Disc Priest this comp has a lot of offensive dispels and damage. Combined with a Holy Paladin, this comp has a lot of defensive cooldowns to go through. Windwalker lacks damage in the current meta, but it does have a lot of burst damage. When we see some changes in the meta, a comp like Windwalker DH or Windwalker Fury Warrior or even Windwalker DK could become really strong. For your talents, your standard build will look like this. Some talents can be swapped depending on what comp you face. For example, Tiger's Lost can be swapped out for Cheat Torpedo when you're looking to chase down a Mistweaver Monk to match his mobility. Good Karma should be used instead of Tiger Tail Sweep if you expect to get swapped to or get trained for the majority of the game. Ring of Peace could be picked versus Melee Cleaves to peel for you or your partners, but it does decrease your own survivability by having a weaker touch of Karma and less setup because you lose the cooldown reduced from leg sweep when specking out of tiger tail sweep. Inner strength can be swapped out for diffuse magic when facing a spell cleave, or for dampen harm when facing a burst comp like DH warrior or rogue mage. Diffuse magic reduces spell damage taken by 60% for 6 seconds and redirects all magical dots active on you back to the caster. Dampen harm reduces damage taken by 20 to 50% with larger attacks being reduced more. This can be used before a big setup where you won't be able to kite the enemy team. Rushing Jade Wind offers the most stable pressure out of all the talents, but it has a pretty big radius and can easily break CC on targets. When using Rushing Jade Wind, make sure to cancel it if the enemy team stacks and your partners land CC on the enemy healer. Zune can be picked instead of Rushing Jade Wind for more burst but less overall damage. Serenity can be swapped out for Running Dragon Punch. In the current meta, Serenity gives the most value since you can line up burst winners with your team while Whirling Dragon Punch offers more stable damage. Whirling Dragon Punch could be used when playing with a class that puts out a lot of stable pressure, for example a DH or Fury Warrior. For your PvP talents, you should always play with Gladiator's Medallion since you can use it both offensively and defensively while rotating cooldowns with your team. There's one PvP talent that should always be picked, which is Fortifying Brew. Fortifying Brew offers you another defensive cooldown and increases your maximum health by 20% and reduces damage taken by 20% for 15 seconds. Now let's take a look at some of the optional PvP talents. When facing a melee cleave, both grapple weapon and heavy handed strikes offer the most value as your second and third PvP talent. Grapple weapon can be used to disarm an enemy player for 6 seconds, allowing you to peel for your team or to survive enemy burst windows. Heavy handed strikes reduces the damage a target does by 20% for 2 seconds stacking up to 3 times whenever they're hit by Fist of Fury. This talent offers a lot of value if used during burst windows to reduce the enemy team's damage since most melee cleaves strain one target and stack for the majority of the game you can apply this debuff to multiple targets at once versus melee cleaves. When facing a caster cleave there are 3 talents to choose from Disabling Reach, Fast Feed and Control the Mists. Disabling Reach increases the range of your slow by 10 yards making it easier to connect onto casters that can easily kite you for example mages and elemental shamans. Fast Feed reduces the duration of snares on you by 20% and increases your movement speed by 15% for 3 seconds after being attacked. This talent has good synergy with Disabling Reach and should be used versus casters that will kite you like mages and elemental shaman. If you don't need extra mobility to connect onto a caster, Control the Mist can be used instead of Fast Feed to give you a free instant cast Vivify all feel every 10 seconds. Every chi spent reduces the cooldown of the proc by 2 seconds. For your Azerite traits, your best traits are Swift Roundhouse, Battlefield Focus and Azerite Veins. For the most damage increase, stacking Swift Roundhouse 3 times will give you the most damage increase. You could swap one Swift Roundhouse for a Battlefield Focus instead since it also works for your teammates. If you find yourself dying a lot, a defensive trait like Azerite Veins or Azerite Fortification can be picked instead to make yourself tankier. Pressure Point, Tidal Surge, Laser Matrix and Resonance Fury are pretty close to each other so pick your pieces based on if they have other good damage traits apart from Swift Roundhouse. For your stats you want to stack Versatility and Mastery. Versatility increases your overall damage and healing and decreases damage taken. Mastery increases the damage of your abilities when you avoid using the same ability twice in a row. 
Haste and Critical Strike simply offer less value than versatility and mastery. As a Windwalker monk, you focus on setting up kill opportunities with your stun, landing on burst cooldowns with your team, peeling for your team, and slowing down the game after burst windows to wait for the next burst window. The playstyle goals for Windwalker are set up a kill opportunity, line up burst cooldowns, peel, and kite when under pressure. Set up a kill opportunity. Since Fist of Fury no longer stuns the target in BFA, the only way to set up kill opportunities for your team is by using your leg sweep. Preferably by stunning multiple targets with it. Since leg sweep stuns anyone within 5 yards, landing a double stun versus a melee cleave should be fairly easy. Against caster cleaves or melee caster teams however, you or your team will have to cover the off target that won't be inside the leg sweep. This can easily be done with your paralysis to stop any interrupt or CC while you burst down the kill target. Another way to set up kill opportunities for your team is by swapping targets when a cooldown has been forced, which allows your team to force even more cooldowns or cleave a team down. Cleaving multiple targets is a good tactic for the rest of Druid since it forces him to constantly swap his life bloom stacks, which will make it hard to keep up his team. Cleaving can also be good for the Holy Paladins when Blessing of Sacrifice is used by swapping to the Paladin to force even more cooldowns. When setting up a burst window, keep in mind that Paladins have Blessing of Protection and Red Paladins also have Blessing of Sanctuary to remove stuns from their partners. If you know the enemy team will use one of these cooldowns or a trinket to survive, you can save your big cooldowns like Touch of Death or Serenity for another setup. Line up burst cooldowns. Since Windwalker lacks stable damage output but can still burst the target down quickly, it's important to line up cooldowns with your team and wait for the right moment to score a kill. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how Touch of Death can be lined up with your team during an offensive setup to score a kill. In the next clip, we can see another setup where Touch of Death and Combustion are lined up, which forces the enemy monk to trinket. By using Touch of Death and forcing a trinket, you can then save your serenity for the next setup to secure the kill. Try to use Karma both offensive and defensively. In this clip, we can see how big Touch of Karma actually is. When used during a setup from the enemy team, you can then turn around the pressure while the target is taking a lot of damage from Touch of Karma and potentially win the game. As said before, sometimes delaying your kill window and doing a bait setup is the better option. If you know the enemy team will simply use a trinket or big cooldown to survive through the setup, you will end up wasting your cooldowns that could have been used for the next setup to secure the kill. Peel. When your team gets pressured instead, it's important to peel for your team with slows, stuns, off heals and dispelling. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how your slows are a big part of peeling the enemy team. Since the target gets rooted after using the sable twice in a row, you can peel for your healer and allow him to get away and recover. In the next clip, we can see how you can use Ring of Peace to peel for your partners during offensive setups. When under pressure from the enemy team, you can use your detox to dispel yourself or your partners from poison and disease dots, for example from assassination rogues or unholy decays or survival hunters. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how you can use Tiger's Lust to get your healer out of CC like Root Beam. The Paladin gets rooted inside the Solar Beam, and by using Tiger's Lust on the Paladin, he can run out of the beam. Additionally, Tiger's Lust can also be used on your partners to help them kite when under pressure. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how you can use your Leg Sweep to peel when your team is under a lot of pressure. Remember that if you use your Leg Sweep defensively, you won't be able to set up an offensive setup for a while, so this should be your last resort. Grapple Weapon can also be used to peel a melee DPS of yourself or your team. In this clip we can see how to peel for yourself with Ring of Peace. The healer sits through a big CC chain, but by kiting and using Ring of Peace before the enemy team connects, you can line of sight and survive a big setup from the enemy team. Kite when under pressure. When you're under pressure instead, you can use your mobility to kite while your team peels for you. Windwalker has received a lot of nerfs to the defensive toolkit and defensive cooldowns, so rotating cooldowns and kiting is way more important than it was before BFA. In the next clip, we can see how you can use your flying serpent kick to kite the enemy team while your healer sits in CC. When the enemy team connects, you can then use your transcendence to port to safety if your healer didn't manage to top you yet. Additionally, you can also use your tiger's lust to kite if you're still in trouble after using your rolls, transcendence and flying serpent kick. 
When kiting, make sure to communicate with your team if you're fine or not. If you get caught in a stun behind a pillar with no trinket or defensive cooldowns, it could be the end of the game. Since Windwalker Mage is your go-to comp, you will score kills and burst windows while getting CC onto the enemy healer. Once you did a setup, it's important that you slow down the game and make it hard for the enemy team to do their setup. In other words, be disruptive to the enemy team. In the next clip, we can see how you can slow down the game. After doing a setup, the enemy team will look to do their setup. By kicking CC or big damage abilities and slowing the enemy team, you can prevent the enemy team from doing their setup. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how to stop the enemy team on their offensive cooldowns. The warrior pops avatar and immediately we can see the enemy team is getting slowed and CC'd to avoid taking any damage on his cooldowns. In the next clip, we can see how we can use Ring of Peace to counter the enemy team during their setup. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how you can use your mobility to eat and stop CC for your healer. We can see the Peldin is stunned, which will most likely mean he will get trapped out. By using your mobility, you can eat CC like traps for your healer to prevent the enemy team from creating pressure. Shortly after the priest moves in for a fear, but by using your slow before the priest reaches your healer, you can stop the fear from landing. You won't be able to eat CC for your healer all the time, but if you're able to do so, it can slow down the game and save a lot of cooldowns for your team. That's gonna be it for this guide guys, please leave a plus skill if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.